weight on celestial objects. So first open up your workbook to page 94. So your page should look like this. So what you're going to be doing is first you need to give it a title. So right here I want you to write weight on celestial objects. And because it's a title, we need to have capitals. Don't forget your own name. And yes, I need last names too. Yikes, it would help if I capitalized one that. Because it's a name. There we go. So we're going to first label the X and Y axis. So the X axis, I'm going to tell you, is going to be weight. And that's going to be in pounds. Okay, then we're going to label the title of the y-axis, which is going to be celestial objects. So now we have weight in pounds on our x-axis, and we have celestial objects on our y-axis. So what I need you to do is I want you to put uh, all eight planets on the first eight lines going in order from closest to the sun to farthest from the sun. Spelling counts. So think about where could I find the spelling of these objects. Hint, 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 some places in your workbook. Then I'm going to give you the last two. So the last two objects are Pluto and then our moon. And spelling does count. So just reminding you, you should have filled in the first eight planets with closest to the sun being here and farthest from the sun being there. Yes, spelling counts. So what we're going to do is you guys are going to be graphing the weight of a 100-pound person on Earth making a bar graph. So we're going to graph Earth first. So I've added Earth to our graph. You should have included the two planets before Earth and the five planets after Earth. So I already told you that we were going to say the human being on Earth weighed 100 pounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bar graph and I'm going to make it bright blue. And oh, whoa, 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 I can't do, how can I graph 100? I don't have any numbers. Hmm. So what I have to do first is I've got to make my scale of my x axes. So I know I'm going to start, and I'm going to use this in black. So I know I'm going to start with zero. All right. And I want to make my the interval of my scale very easy. So I'm just going to make each number represent 25 pounds because remember we're doing it in pounds. So 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. So notice I'm not marking each hash mark because I write too big. But on your workbook page you probably can write small and fit it. So this would be 150. 200, 250, yikes, my handwriting is horrible, okay, obviously don't write that bad, like, so Mrs. Colville really should erase to be a good example, shouldn't she, so let's try this again, 250, that's a little better, and then 300, so if you can fit 25 there, and 75 there, and 125 there, and 175 there, and 225, and 275, that would be awesome. So I've added my 
scale for the x-axis. So I want to go back to graphing Earth. So remember I said the Earthling, human on Earth, weighed 100 pounds. So I'm going to make a bar graph. So I'm going to find where it says 100. And I'm going to shade it in. And because I've got... I'm doing this on the iPad. It's not the clearest, but this should look very nice and neat on your workbook page. Okay. So I have my Earthling weighs 100 pounds. So what you are going to be doing is you are going to be searching on the internet the other weights of an person that weighs 100 pounds on earth what they would weigh on these different celestial objects so the other seven moons plus our dwarf planet pluto plus our moon so if i go into google and i type weight on earth's moon and i scroll down all right, this is what we learned in something else in one of our readings it says since gravity is much weaker on the moon Everything weighed only one-sixth of Earth weight. So what I need to do for this math is I'm going to take my 100 pounds that I have on Earth and I'm going to make it a fraction. I'm going to multiply it by one-sixth. So if I simplify that, 100 pounds times 1 equals 100. So it's still 100 pounds. And 1 times 6, shocking, is 6. So I need to do that math. 100 divided by 6, which is 16.67 pounds. So I'm going to round that out to about 17 pounds. So I want to make it a whole number. So when I go back to my graph, I'm going to go our moon. So here's my problem. On my scale, I only have 0, 25, 50. So I've got to figure out where is 17 pounds. So 17 would be between the 0 and the 25. So it's going to be a little more than half. And I'm going to make a little bar graph and color it in. Remember, your bar graph should be completely covered in. And then I'm going to Google search the weight on other planets. So I'm going to usually find a fraction, or I might find a whole number for those larger planets. And I'm going to take the weight of the human, which is 100 pounds on Earth, and I'm going to multiply that fraction or multiply that whole number to get my answer. Remember, round to the nearest ones place, please, in pounds. You're going to work with your partner for the rest of this workbook page because I want you to notice what happens to the weight on these celestial objects because when I looked at uh, applying gravity to our natural world, I saw that some of you don't understand what happens to our weight on larger objects. Work well as a group and remember you're going to assess each other. So be productive and don't distract. Work good and I want a good report. Thank you. Good luck.